What makes you, you, your face, your voice, the color of your eyes, every detail of your identity is written in a hidden code. A biological manuscript so powerful that it decides life itself. That code is DNA. Here's the jaw-dropping part. If we took the DNA from just a single one of your cells and stretched it out, it would be almost two meters long. Yet somehow, it's packed so tightly that it fits inside the microscopic nucleus of the cell. And remember, you have about 37 trillion cells. That means your body carries a library of genetic instructions long enough to reach the sun and back hundreds of times. And the real kicker, just a strand of your hair, or a single drop of blood, can reveal exactly who you are, uniquely you, out of billions on this planet. This is the incredible power of DNA. But what is this molecule actually made of? And why did scientists call its structure the secret of life? Stay with me, because the answer is a story of mystery, rivalry, and one of the greatest discoveries in the history of science. DNA, the molecule that carries the instructions of life. It sits inside the nucleus, built as a double helix of repeating nucleotides, storing information in the form of genes. These genes decide who we are, and pass our traits to the next generation. But here's the real question. Did scientists always know DNA was the hereditary molecule? Or did this discovery take years of mystery and experiments? Let's uncover the story. Our story begins in 1869, inside a small laboratory in Switzerland. A young German chemist, Friedrich Miescher, was examining pus cells collected from bandages. Strange choice, yes, but what he found changed biology forever. He extracted a white, jelly-like substance from the nucleus of these cells. It was neither protein nor fat. Because it came from the nucleus and was acidic, he named it, nuclein. At that time, nobody knew what this mysterious substance did, so it was largely ignored for decades. For almost 50 years, Nuclein sat in textbooks as nothing more than, some acidic stuff, in the nucleus. Scientists were focused on proteins, assuming they were the true carriers of life's information. DNA was seen as too simple to matter. In the 1920s, a biochemist named Phoebus Levine began breaking down nuclein piece by piece. He discovered that DNA was made of repeating units called nucleotides. Each nucleotide had three parts, a phosphate group, a 5-carbon sugar and a nitrogenous base. Levine even suggested the tetranucleotide hypothesis, that DNA was just a simple repeating chain of four bases. Unfortunately, this idea misled scientists for a while, making DNA seem too boring to carry complex genetic information. Then came Erwin Chargaff, who noticed something crucial. He discovered that in DNA, the amount of adenine always equals thymine and the amount of guanine always equals cytosine. This was the first hint that DNA had a structured pairing system, like pieces of a puzzle. But how exactly were they arranged? That mystery was still unsolved. By this point, the world knew three things about DNA. It was located in the nucleus, it was made of nucleotides and its bases followed pairing rules. But the actual structure of DNA, how all these pieces fit together, was still waiting to be discovered. And that's where the next chapter begins, with X-ray images, a race between scientists, and the final unveiling of the double helix by Watson and Crick in 1953. The mystery of DNA's structure finally reached its climax in 1953. Building on decades of work, two young scientists at Cambridge University, James Watson and Francis Crick, pieced together the puzzle. Their breakthrough was inspired by critical X-ray diffraction data from Rosalind Franklin, which hinted at a spiral shape. Watson and Crick proposed that DNA is not just any spiral, it is a double helix, like a twisted ladder. Here's what their model revealed. DNA is made of two polynucleotide chains running in opposite directions, one 3 to 5 end and the other 5 to 3 ends. This antiparallel arrangement is essential for stability and replication. Bases face inward and always pair in a strict way. 
adenine pairs with thymine via two hydrogen bonds and guanine pairs with cytosine via three hydrogen bonds. This explained Chargaff's rule. Why adenine is equal to thymine and guanine is equal to cytosine in every DNA molecule. Pairing a large purine with a small pyrimidine keeps the DNA's diameter constant at 2 nanometers. This solved the problem of structural consistency. The bases are flat and stacked 0.34 nanometers apart, like steps of a staircase. The helix makes a full turn every 3.4 nanometers containing 10 base pairs per turn. The double helix is stabilized not just by hydrogen bonds, but also by hydrophobic interactions and base stacking. Because of specific base pairing, DNA can be copied exactly. Each strand serves as a template for the other, the very basis of heredity. So, this is how scientists uncovered DNA over decades of research. Now let's me quickly summarize it for you. DNA is a double helix, made of two long strands twisted around each other like a spiral staircase. These strands run in opposite directions, which scientists call antiparallel. And what holds them together? Nucleotides, the building blocks of DNA. A nucleotide has three parts, a sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. It's the nitrogenous bases that give DNA its code and they come in two groups, purines and pyrimidines. Purines are the larger bases, with two rings. These are adenine and guanine. Pyrimidines are smaller, with a single ring. These are cytosine and thymine. And here's the magic. Each base pairs specifically with its partner through hydrogen bonds. Guanine pairs with cytosine, and adenine pairs with thymine. This precise pairing keeps the DNA strands tightly bound, giving the helix a consistent 2 nanometer diameter. Now, the phosphate and hydroxyl groups on the nucleotides can react chemically. When the phosphate group of one nucleotide bonds with the hydroxyl group of another, a water molecule is released, forming a strong covalent bond called the phosphodiester bond. This links nucleotides into a long chain, with a free phosphate at one end and a free hydroxyl at the other, ready to connect with more nucleotides. Thousands of nucleotides can stack on top of each other, a process called base stacking, which adds even more stability to the DNA molecule. Each base is 0.34 nanometers apart, and 10 bases complete one turn of the helix, about 3.4 nanometers in length. As the strands twist, they form two grooves, a major groove and a minor groove, which are important for protein interactions and gene regulation. And you know what the most amazing part is. DNA can be up to 2 meters long in a single cell, yet it fits neatly inside the nucleus. How? The double helix coils around proteins, forming chromatin, which then folds tightly to fit inside the tiny space of the nucleus. And that, in a nutshell, is the structure of DNA, elegant, stable, and ready to store all the information that makes you, you. Fascinating, isn't it? But one mystery still remained. How did scientists discover that DNA, and not proteins, is the hereditary material? This question led to the famous Griffith experiment. Comment below if you'd like me to narrate this amazing story for you. Then, keep exploring the wonders of life.